Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are here again as it's already a new day. We thank Jesus for this uh, month as new things are still coming in our way as we have received many and the Lord has still coming. We welcome you in a very special way as today is on 10th of May 2020. And wherever you are, you're most welcome. Join us to worship the Lord and thank you. And let's pray, believe and pray together this morning before we start our services. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We will never be tired of saying thank you for your love and mercy and goodness. We will never be tired of calling you Abba because you are our Father, our Daddy in heaven. We will never be tired of coming into your presence, O oh Daddy, to worship you. Because in your presence there is fullness of joy, in your presence there is fullness of love, in your presence there is fullness of power, in your presence there is fullness of anointing, in your presence there is fullness of everything that our heart could desire. We thank you, Daddy, and we praise you for this day that you have set apart for us to come and worship you. Thank you for your mercies and goodness and, and blessings that are about to come on our way. We thank you for all that you've already done for the last nine days of this month. Thank you for all the new things that are happening in our lives. Even revealing your word to us, it's a new blessing. We thank you, Jesus, for speaking to us in a very personal way through all our daily Bible studies. We thank you, Jesus, for every time we read your word, we always understand what you mean and what you're trying to, to speak to us. We thank you so much for this grace. And we pray, Lord, as we are going live this morning, that your name may be glorified, that your name may be exalted, that your name be magnified. Let those who are listening to today's service, Lord, may be lifted in another level, may be lifted in another stage, oh Lord, to love you, to praise you, to glorify you, and even to seek your face more. We thank you and we praise you. And we give ourselves to the Lord, withholding nothing, that you, you may use us, according to your will. Here we are, Jesus, at your place. We are here, Lord, as we are the clay and you are the potter. Mold us, melt us, and use us the way you want. For we say yes to your will. We offer and surrender those who are listening to us. The Lord, as you manifest your power in this place, that the same power may be manifested in their lives, in their families and in their houses. And everything that they have and they have. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Most welcome, my brothers and sisters, for today's call to worship. We are going to read Psalms 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamt. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with sting singing. Then said they among the hidden, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the sun. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weeps, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You're most welcome. Join us as we are going to worship the Lord and praise him. As he has already promised us that those who go in tears, they will reap with joy. They'll come with loud singing. And we pray that this word of God may be fulfilled in our lives. That it may be true as is always a God who never lies. Is a God who keeps his covenant. Is a God who keeps his word. And we are glad that we belong to this God who keeps his word, who keeps his covenant, who keeps his promises. He may delay, but he will never deny. Because whatever he says, he shall bring it to fulfillment. So wherever you are, join us to worship him and glorify his name. 
as we join together and declare that he is Jehovah, the God who is a God by himself. Jehovah,
morning church and happy Mother's Day. I thank for all mothers in, in this church. May you be blessed as you continue to be teachable mothers. Now it's time of announcement. 2020's prophetic focus. Let us, let us be reminded that the prophetic fo focus of the year 2020 is manifest glory. According to Isaiah 62, the will of God for us this year is to make us a church and as individual, the clear and invisible expression of the invisible glory in our generation. May prophetic focus. This month is the month of new things. This month the Lord is saying to us from Isaiah 43, 19, I will do a new thing. God wants to move us from to a next level of grace, blessings, and power we have never known before. God is about to surprise our enemies beyond start a new thing in your life, family, business, and ministry. <coughs> daily devotion. Our daily devotion continues on social media, WhatsApp, and Facebook. We are encouraged to stand in the gap in prayer for our families and our country on daily basis. Bible reading challenge. The Bible reading challenge continues this week. We are reading 2 Chronicles 12 to 2 Chronicles 36. We are encouraged to spend minimum 15 minutes every day to fellowship and meditate on the Word of God. 6 to 6 fasting. Our weekly fasting and our prayers hold this week from Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 40 days prayer. From 22nd April, we have started our 40 days of, of prayers. We are admonished to ask God to show himself alive in our lives for minimum 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening, following the prayers guideline provided on the social media. Connect, express, expect, and experience. Midweek Bible study is our week is our school of doctrine of to equip us in deep knowledge of Christ and the word of a victorious Christian life. This month we, will ex we still explore in the topic on the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Friday Peniel. Peniel is our school of inner healing and spiritual warfare. Also the intercession platform of the church. We meet online this Friday from 10 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. The thing contained in battle. Next Sunday, Sunday of New Kings Part 3, welcome. We welcome our pastor for the service. Praise the Lord, Word of Life. Wherever you are, I greet you today from our Word of Life studio. Praise God. I hope you are all well. I know uh, God is keeping you. And we give all the glory to Him forevermore. So to all the mothers in the Word of Life, so happy Mother's Day to all of you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who want to add more children, be blessed in Jesus' name. And for all those who have not yet, I say also, Happy Mother's Day because I know you are mothers. And the Lord be glorified forevermore. So welcome to the service in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm glad, I'm so happy to know that you are all there online and uh, connecting to the message of of the day i am so happy i'm so excited as you can see 
and we bless the name of Jesus Christ. I know today's message will um, will um, change somebody's level forever. I know somebody will never be the same after today's message. I know there will be a dramatic turnaround in somebody's life as a result of the message that you will get today. Well, but before I go to preach the word of the day, I would like to invite Agnes again to sing the song, uh, you know, Hosanna. Hosanna means may God save. That's the meaning of Hosanna. God save us. And today is the day of salvation in Jesus' name. But before Agnes come, uh, I see, thank you very much. I see Mangoli, you are online. I greet you in Jesus' name. It's good to interact with people. It's not just to come straight the word. No, talking is, is, is important. Grace Chacha, thank you very much. I see you are online also. God bless you. Can you greet the pastor today? Please, greet me. <laughs> I'm greeting you wherever you are. I want to know. Faith and also is online. Good morning, Faith. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm happy. I mean, I mean, uh, everybody is uh, is almost there. The Lord bless you. Who else is around? I want to see you to read from you. Caroline Omondi, yes, my scribe. <laughs> God bless you, Caro, and uh, happy Mother's Day to you. Blessing, blessings to you and your family, your children, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, um, I'm waiting a little bit because I want to greet some other people to see who, uh, who, are, uh, who are connected. I'm waiting for you to, to greet us. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Well, who else? Wanjiru Lucy. Wow. Wanjiru Lucy. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. I don't want to say more. <laughs> oh, my daughter Hilda David, you are blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you where you are uh, in Gumba Estate. You are blessed of the Lord. Rhoda Mela, good morning and happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Mr. Kimani Mungai, yes, God bless you. Oh, Jane Christmas is also there. Happy Mother's Day. Mr. Kimani, say uh, 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 Mother's Day happy to your wife, Mrs. Kimani. <laughs> Amen. Yes, Lucy, you know why you are laughing. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm happy. You know, we are a family, and it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing to be in a family. Amen. And glory be to God. Mangoli, 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 Mangoli. You you know Mangoli, Mangoli. Vayo. Mm. Well, okay. We talk. Kando, uh, Kando. <laughs> Mangoli. We have to talk Kando, Kando. Well, God bless you, Mangoli, and uh, I'm so happy. Oh, my goodness, that's a beautiful family. We are all together in Jesus' name. God bless you. Well, I have greeted you in the name of the Lord. Now, let us go uh, to sing again uh, to the Lord as we prepare our hearts to, to receive the, the message of today. Oh, uh -huh. 
bless your name today in the name of Jesus and we thank you for the opportunity to come to your presence. As we open the Bible, as we open the book, minister to us in a mighty way. All we need is you. Change our life by your word and bless my people wherever they are and give them the understanding of what we'll be talking about today. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed and we say Amen. Amen. Well, you know the topic of the month of May 2020 is I will do a new thing. Our scripture is in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 to 19 as you can see on the screen. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, the Bible says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And I was encouraging us to memorize this scripture because it is the scripture of the month may you have it in you all the days of your life as it appears before God does a new thing you must forget the old things because God say don't remember the former things God cannot open a new chapter in your life if you still hang on the old chapter of your life. The promise is the promise of God and it is God himself who say, I will do a new thing. May God do new things in your life this month. The first point I want to talk about is this one. I'm asking myself a question. And the question is, what is new thing? Or if you wish, I could say, what is in new thing? Number one, take note that new thing is new name. The first thing, because when God say God, God say I will do a new thing, it is good to know what is the new thing you will do. In Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2, the Bible says. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Now, I want to tell somebody today, God will give you a new name. Amen. 
When God said, I will do a new thing, it means new name. You will never be called barren again in the name of Jesus. You will not be called beggar again in Jesus' name. Because God will give you a new name. Number two, new name, new thing means new song. Amen. New thing means new song. Let's go back to the, the word of God. Psalm 91, 98 verse 1, the Bible says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Hallelujah. Somebody will have a new song this season in Amen. Jesus' name. The song of worry, the song of sickness, the song of disease, the song of uh, the song of uh, uh, my husband did not come after curfew, the the, the 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 song of coronavirus will be over because God says. He will give you a new song. Now, under the sound of my voice, be ready for a new song. Amen. Now, you should not wait for things to change. Start singing a new song in the situation you are in. Now, listen. Don't wait for God to break down the wall of Jericho. Sing until the wall of Jericho falls. Now, Paul and Silas were in prison. They were not singing the song of prisoners. Now, don't, don't make your circumstance a song. No. Now, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. Don't make your situation a song. Don't make your situation a song. No, when they ask you, how are you? Hi, Pastor. You can't imagine. Hi, my husband. Hi, my wife. Hi, my children. Receive a new song in Jesus' name. Now, what is the new thing? Number three, new thing is new creature. New creature. New creature. I mean, new nature. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, as you can see on the screen, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What is in the new things? What is in new things? New things, number four, is new house. <laughs> new house. New house. Now, what is the Bible saying? The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8, the Bible says this. Let us read it. Deuteronomy 22, verse 8. The Bible says, When thou beatest a new house, now somebody will be Amen. Because that is part of the new things. Then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, and thou bring not blood upon a house if any man fall, uh, fall from death. That is another thing also about uh, 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 new things. And number five, new things is also new wife and new husband. Agnes, say amen. <laughs> I mean, new thing is new wife and new husband. Listen to the Bible. So don't look at me as a pastor. What do you mean? The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 5, when a man has taken a new wife. Now, God will give somebody a new wife. God will give somebody a new husband. Amen to a few. Thank you, Jesus. Agnes, can you say amen to that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. Now, listen to this. When you get a new wife, a new wife, your battles are over. The Bible says you shall not go to war. Abba. Now, how come that the moment you get married that you are having war? Something is wrong. Okay, that is not a topic of marriage. But <laughs> New things, also number six, it is new covenant. New covenant. In the Bible, in Hebrew chapter 8, verse 13, 
Hebrews 8, 13, the Bible says, in, in that he said a new covenant he had made, the first old. You see, anytime there is a new thing, the old must pass away. Anytime God does a new thing, the new, the past, uh, uh, the old must pass away. Not that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So, anytime God is about to do a new thing, the old must pass away. Now, uh, number six, what is in the new thing? A new thing also, it we have, we, 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 we have also a new mind. New mind. New mind. We see it in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, 2. What does the Bible say? It's Romans 12, 2. The Bible says that is Paul who said, but at it, it is written. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. Oh, Romans 12, 2 is not here in my, in my notes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, oh. Okay, Romans 12, 2 says this. And be not conformed in this world, but be ye transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So, new thing is new mind. May you have new mind from now. You cannot, you cannot build a new mind with the old mind. You cannot build a new relationship with an old mind. You cannot expect God to do new things with old mentality. Your mentality must change, must be aligned with the new thing that God is about to do. And finally, what is in the new thing? In the new thing we have what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. That is in the new thing. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, 1 Corinthians 2 9, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear had, neither have entered into the heart of men the things that God prepared for them that love him. New things. <laughs> now, listen to me very carefully, word of life. You, 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 you better understand that uh, God is the God who, do, who does what eyes have not seen. What ears have not had? What no one? You know, I want you to know God is doing something in somebody's life that if ever people tell you you will not believe, you, you won't believe. This is the new thing we are talking about. What nobody has ever thought about. What nobody has ever heard about. What no one else has seen, that is new thing. Imagine Mary, the mother of Jesus, the angel come to her and say to her, you know what? Mary, you will be pregnant. How? The Holy Spirit. How? How? That's a new thing. What eyes have not seen. Now, I want to let you know something, that new things are only, 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 for those who love God. New things are for those who love God. So if you want to be entitled to new things, the key is love God. Well, that is the first point I wanted to uh, mention for you. Now, let me go to the second point where I want to talk about the purpose of this teaching. Why am I teaching what I will teach today? And I want also to answer a question. To who this message is prepared for? Because I had somebody in mind when I was preparing today's teaching. And I had, maybe you, I don't know, maybe not you, but, I mean, see, Julie. But I had somebody in mind as I was preparing the message of today. Now, what are the people I have prepared the message to or for? Now, the first people I have prepared today's message, I mean, the first people God want to minister to is those who are not certain.
satisfied to the way things are in their lives. Hello? So that is, now if you, if you are satisfied where you are, please, that message is not for you. So let us agree before I go further. So where you are, you are happy. All is okay. Now, you can even switch this message. I'm not sure it will, it will be for you. Now, <laughs> the second category of people, it is... Uh, those who want to be catapulted from where they are to where they are supposed to be. Now, if you don't want to be catapulted, <laughs> the message today is not for you. Number three, today's message is for the release of the anointing for promotion. In Jesus' name. Amen. After this message, somebody will be promoted supernaturally. Amen. Now, if you think you don't need promotion, I mean, so already I'm preparing those who can leave the message before I continue. So if you say, no, I mean, me, I, I am so promoted, so I don't need this message, so stay away. Now, I want to give you a scripture because I'm still in the purpose of the message. Agnes, listen to me. Listen to me, oh. <laughs> because, listen and take notes if you are taking notes. Nobody changes whatever he is comfortable with. Take notes. No one changes what he is comfortable with. That's why the comfort zone is the most dangerous zone somebody can be in. Now, remember, one day I told you in the social media on WhatsApp, I think, I mean, all, all the platform we have, one day I told you, don't be so much comfortable that you cannot be replaced. Eh? You better know, anybody can be replaced at any point of time. Anybody, including me. If you become too comfortable, it is a very dangerous place to be. Now, there is a scripture I would like you to read. It is on the screen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5 to 7. Let us read. There is an evil. I have seen under the sun as an error. As what? Okay. Now, underline error because I put it in blue because I know what I want to talk about. As an error which proceeded from the ruler, folly is set in great dignity, and they reach it in low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Solomon who has written this, this book say, ah, he was watching. You know Solomon was an observer. So he was observing things how things are. Now, he looked at those who are sitting in dignity. He considered they are foolish. Now, now when he look at the, those who are in low place, he see the rich. Ah, what's wrong? Now, he sees servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. That's why he said, ah, ah, that's not normal. That is not normal. You know, sometimes you can look. You look at a beautiful woman, smart, intelligent, a lot of gifts. But you see how the husband of that woman is treating her. You wonder, what's wrong? You look at a man, God-fearing, 
serving God, loving God. But you look at the, the, the wife, funny. You wonder, what's wrong? You look at those who have papers. They have diplomas, degrees, injury, what, what, what. But you see them, they are selling potatoes. While you look at those who are in position of, 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 of power, they don't have any paper. They don't have nothing. So it has troubled Solomon. He said, ah, what is wrong? Why things are that way? So that is why I said, today's message is for those who are not satisfied the way things are. You cannot change what you are comfortable with. Lady, if the way your husband is treating you, you are comfortable with, you cannot change it. Every day he's calling you stupid, stupid. And you go and say, and your mother tells you, my daughter, I was also that way. Your father was uh, insulting me. <laughs> Just carry your cross. Stop that thing of carrying the cross which Jesus already carried. <laughs> no. No. No, 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 no. One million times no. What you accept will remain. What you refuse will leave you. Whatever you accept, you won't change it. It will be that way. That's why the man of God, Solomon, looked at things. He said, there is an error. Say with me, there is an error. See, <laughs> an error means that something is wrong. Now, I want to let you know today, after this message, all those errors in your life will be fixed. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. You know, I am a man of God. I am a prophet. I am an apostle. By virtue of the anointing of God upon my life, I want to let somebody know the error will be fixed. Amen. Now, don't ask me how. God will fix that error. Amen. It means folly will be in low place and they reach. Now, it means you will be repositioned to where you have been supposed to be. Somebody under the sound of my voice, God will reposition you. He will put you in a position where you are supposed to be. You will be treated as you were supposed to be treated. Abba, Abba. Because there is a shift in today's message. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. There is a shift that God is about to do because things should not be that way. Now, listen to me, word of life. Everything abnormal, as far as I am concerned, I reject it. May you reject everything that is abnormal in your life. My friend, polygamy is abnormal. Reject it. Fornication is abnormal. Reject it. A husband who does not respect you, uh, uh, no, reject his attitude, but stay in the marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Reject it. My friend, stop that nonsense. I mean, you see, no, 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 no. Whatever is not in line with what God has in store for you, I say no to it. Me, there are many things I refuse. I refuse. I say, no, 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 no. I don't want it. No. There was a moment in my life I refused that my parents would be giving me the money. I refused it from my heart. Please, word of life, wherever you are, anything in your life that is abnormal, reject it. <laughs> now, let us go back to our scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, 
verse 5 to 7. Now, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun as what? As an error. Now, <laughs> as an error. You know, let me give you a simple example. But let me define before I give the example what is error. In the text we have read, error comes from, from a Hebrew word, and I don't want to give you that word because it, it can complicate you for, for, for no reason. But the Hebrew word means in Advertent sin. In advertent sin. In advertent sin. Now, what does in advertent mean? In advertent means, take note of that. It's very important, very important. In advertent means a action that you do without realizing what you are doing. Inadvertent is an action that you do without realizing what you are doing. It is an action marked by or resulting from carelessness. So I'm defining for you today the word error in the context of Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. Now, the synonyms of inadvertence is unintentional, accidental, unintended, carelessness. Now, many people in the Bible lost their position by error, meaning by inadvertent sin, a sin you are committing but you are not aware that it is a sin. That is what the Bible calls error. Now, let me give you an example as we proceed in our teaching. Go to Genesis 25, verse 32. The Bible says, And Esau said, Agnes, who said? Esau. Now, Esau said, Behold! you my friend let me go back I mean I want to look at somebody do you know Esau did not know that he was transferring the bad rights by his own mouth Tabi hallelujah that is error hey what can you be counted as men? You can go, I don't care. Go, go, go wherever you want to go. You are that is error. Can you be counted as a wife? You can go wherever you want to go. Go, 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 go. My friend, you are transferring this man to somebody else. You are transferring this woman to somebody else. You have a job. Oh, what is that job? What is that job? Uh, it is nothing. No, 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 no. I'm telling you the truth before the Lord. There are many people who will lose the blessings God has given to them by error, by being careless, by not being serious. My friend, the ministry God has given to me, I take it seriously. There are many people 
people and tell them the truth. And mark today. Mark today. Today is 10th May. Many people will lose something precious God has given to them by error. Neglecting the grace. Neglecting the bless, the blessing. Neglecting what God has given to them. Not appreciating the blessing God has given to you, it's an error. God has given you a pastor. God has given you a church. God has given you a husband. God has given you a wife. God has given you a job. God has given you see three words. But you are mistreating that man. You are mistreating that woman. You are mistreating that whatever people. The friend God has given to you to take care of you, to be a blessing to you. You are neglecting them. You are pushing them away. That is what the Bible calls error. Now, listen to me. Because of error, there are many people. I'm prophesying. It is not a very good prophecy because I know and I know that there are people who are very careless with the blessing of God upon their life. I come, I give you 1,000. I said, take this 1,000. It is my gift for you. The way you receive the gift will make God to say, I will give you more. So, so error is defined as a nation which is wrong and you don't know it is wrong. So please learn to appreciate. What you don't appreciate will depreciate. What you don't value, somebody else will value. Ah, what is one thousand? What is one thousand? You throw it. Somebody will pick that 1,000 and you don't know. Yesterday I was hearing a testimony of somebody who told me one day after the service, I didn't know what to do. And somebody came and gave me 1,000. He did not know that it was all that I needed that moment to buy food. You are rejecting, depreciating the grace of God and act. now listen to me, you people, you listen to me. Whatever you depreciate, you automatically transfer to somebody else. What you depreciate, you you are not getting what I'm talking about. You are not getting. Jesus said, mm, Behold, I am at the point of time. What profit that marriage? What profit that ministry? What profit? I am, I am just collecting money, 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 but I see nothing. <laughs> learned in my life that's why God blesses me to appreciate even the small thing even a presence for me it is very important even 20 I remember Tabitha, Tabitha somebody gave a tithe of 20 shillings in this church 20 shillings today this person is giving tithe of, me, of thousands it was one year ago I cried when I saw her. I cried when I saw her. She told me, Pastor, Pastor, I give 20 shillings. That is my tithe. I pray. I said, God bless this woman. God bless this woman. You are careless. Sorry to say that if you are offended. You are careless. God has given you a good relationship, a blessed relationship. You are careless. You are careless. Careless with yourself, careless with your house, careless with your spouse, careless with the people God has given to you, careless with the pastor God has given to you. We are praying for people, people are getting healed, but you are careless. We read this one, we read this man, we don't know where he comes from. Sidri, what, what, what? You are careless. Whatever you depreciate, God will give it to somebody else. 
Take note of this today. I'm telling you it is 10th May 2020. One day I will tell you, you remember I told you something. I saw it raw in my own life. Some people who depreciated what I was giving them, somebody took it. So, the observation of Solomon was a, a, a mirror. A mirror. You might not commit adultery. You might not commit fornication. You might not commit, but you are a complainer. That's a error. It means doing something you are not aware it is wrong. You are complaining over everything. You complain even, even over a cup of water. You complain. You are never happy. You never appreciate. You never say thank you. That's why this week is our week of praise challenge. Why do I engage the church to that? Because there is something in this church I want to kill. Complaining and murmuring. Do you know why Israel never entered in the promised land? Because they were never appreciating what God was doing for them. God gave them the manna. They say, oh, what is that manna? What is it? What is that manna? God said, ah, for you manna is nothing, my friend. You won't enter. And I'm telling you the truth before the Lord. There are many people under the sound of my voice. God has already stopped them from entering their promised land. Many people died in the desert not because of God, but because of the error. Because the promised land for God for them. But they rejected it. You know, what happened? When Paul and Silas was preaching, they went to the Jews. I pray that God will forgive somebody and I want to, somebody to cry to God for mercy. They were preaching. Now, the Jews were rejecting them. Go, 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 go. Now, automatically and immediately, they went to the Gentiles. And they told the people, because you reject us, my friend, rejection, rejection is redirection. What you reject will be redirected to somebody else. And it is scriptural, but I don't have time for that. Receive the mercy of God today. In Jesus' name. Now, look at Esau. Later, he realized his error with tears. Later, I say later, later, my friend, later can be late. Take note, later can be late. Abba, later can be late. Later he realized his error, but it was late. Now let me read for you Hebrews chapter 12, verse 17. The Bible says, For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Praise be the living God. This man is so because he rejected the, the birthright. When the moment came for him to have the blessing, he cried. My friend, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Agnes, there are some tears that will never change anything in the heart of God. Some people will cry, but it will not change anything. Because Esau cried. May God preserve you from crying tomorrow. I say I prophesy over somebody that you will not make such error in your life. Somebody mistreated his wife. The wife went, got married, is happy, 
Later, 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 later. Or oh, let me say in English, American English, letter, letter. <laughs> letter. Letter. <laughs> this man is crying. I know. This man is asking for forgiveness. But this woman has moved on. She has moved on. She has moved on. This man, as I'm talking to you right now, has nothing. He lost the job. He lost cars. He lost matatus. He lost money. He is sleeping on the floor somewhere here on earth. He cried. He said, oh, please forgive me. And I was told, I said, my friend, forgive him, but block him. Do the same, the two. Forgive and block. Because you are already married. This man can, can, can come and trouble your marriage. Forgive and block him. And tell him, my friend, I have forgiven you in the name of Jesus, but don't text me again. Some people, what you consider as a trash is a treasure for somebody. May your eyes be open today to see the birthright that God has given to you. A blessing in your heart. You are rejected. One day you will cry. But I pray that somebody will not cry. I pray that somebody will not make that error. That will cause irreparable damage and tears in your life. Because Esau cried. What you consider as a trash is somebody's treasure. Can be somebody's treasure. <laughs> what you consider as a trash can be somebody's treasure somewhere. Somebody will appreciate it. Somebody will love it. So please, I want to encourage somebody. Whatever you are, you are neglected. You are abandoned. People are mocking you. People are laughing at you. Maybe because you don't have money. Maybe because you don't have anything. But you know what? The greatest asset somebody can have is the breath. The greatest asset, take note, that somebody can have in life is his breath. My friend, as long as you have the breath on you, even if you don't have money, it's, it's, it's an asset. It is an asset. It is an asset. Because there are people who have money without breath, they are nothing. Somebody will be visited. Your life will never be the same again. Joseph was left in the pits, but 20 years later, they found him on top. And those who left him in the pit were in the pit. I want to let you know, any pit is a transition to the top. Any pit is a transition to the top. Don't worry, my friend. It shall be well with you. I want to let you know there are people who fight battles in their lives since the womb of their mother. So today's message Oh, by the way, I did not yet start my message. You better know that. <laughs> Aki, uh, uh, why are you laughing? I've not yet started. Tabita, did you write something? <laughs> I've not yet started. I'm still there in the introduction. Who this message is for? I want to pray today. The message of today is for someone who is going through battle since the womb of his mother. 
since the mother's womb. You know, you know, all pregnancies are not the same. There are some pregnancies, I know your mothers, you know, some pregnancies, the battle starts that the moment you are pregnant. The man, the, the man leaves you, he goes to you, he wear, the things become tough, you are sick all the time, things are just tough. The, you, uh, I mean, you, 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 you face maybe miscarriage, it's, it's abort or something like this. It means that some battles start from you. Today, I will praise those battles will come to an end in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, today's message is for who? It is for someone who is left behind. Why others are ahead of him? That is the message of today. Others are ahead. You, you are left behind. Your, 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 your friend who are very close to you. You look at them. Ah, they are pregnant. You look at yourself. You are still there. Not only one pregnancy. One, two, three, four, five. Five children. You are still there. That is for you this message. Who this message is destined for? The message is for someone who is left in the back. You look at your life, you are like, uh uh. Really? Why is my life that way? What is wrong with me? And you know, there are some people in life. You finish the university the same moment, the same time. But the people you have finished, your schoolmates, they are working already. You are left behind. There will be a supernatural relocation for someone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm starting my message now. <laughs> but I want to give a word to somebody. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord. Say so it will be the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Israel. Look at me. Ahab left Elijah. He was riding on a horse. Things were very fast for him. Elijah was left behind and he was out walking. Now, the Bible says, the hand of the Lord. Say with me, the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he, Abba, he overtook Ahab. Receive the hand of the Lord right now because somebody, God will give you a speed. I say what? Them. Ah, uh, you are not getting what I'm talking about. I say you will overtake them in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, you know what? This church of you us, what of life, we are only one here. And I would like to let you know we became, we started behind many. Now, a good news for you, word of life, this church of you us, on our Baraza pastors meeting, they told me, word of life, you are ahead of all of us. Amen. 
Can you say amen to that? Amen. I say you receive. No, when the hand of God come upon your life, you will overtake those who have gone before you. Say with me, I will overtake. Say with me, I will overtake. Say I will overtake. I don't care. Those who went ahead of me, you have five children, it's okay. Go ahead of me. You have a situation, what it's okay. Now, now, they told me, your pastor, pastor, when, when the COVID will be over, you will teach us how to do ministry online. Amen. A one year child. You, you, you better fear God. They are of the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. I see the hand of the Lord. Somebody, and you will overtake Abba. Those who went ahead of you, you will be ahead of them. I see somebody under the sound of my voice. You will overtake. You will overtake. You will overtake. I say you will overtake. But to overtake takes the hand of God. May you have the hand of God now. Those who work ahead of you, you will overtake them. Amen. The number of houses you will build, Amen. you will overtake them. <laughs> the number of houses you will build, my friend, you will overtake them. Somebody who is waiting upon the Lord for the children, you will have four at, at once. Yeah. <laughs> Say with me, I'll overtake it. Say, I will overtake. Say, I will overtake. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. No, please, my friend, I want you to relax. Say with me, I will relax. Yes. If some, if people are going ahead of you, let them go. Don't live in competition with people. Follow your pace. Follow your pace. Now, the topic of my message of today is the God of Pharaohs. The God of Pharaohs. Pharaohs is P H A R E Z. P H A R E Z. Who is the God of Pharaohs? The God of Pharaohs, take note of this. He is the God who reconfigures. <laughs> the God of Pharaohs is the God who rearranges. The God of Pharaohs is the God who pushes a person who has been completely written off to make him a subject of decoration and celebration. Wait. Let me repeat for you, my friend. Because I'm starting my teaching now. So all that I said was introduction. <laughs> the God of Pharaohs is the God who reconfigures, rearranges, remolds, and pushes a person who has been completely written off. You have been completely written off to make him a subject of decoration and celebration. God told me to tell you if you have been written off, God will make you a subject of decoration and celebration. Ah, so rejection is not enough. Because after rejection, there is decoration, there is celebration. Somebody who has been rejected, you will be decorated. Amen. Now listen to me. You can be rejected, but God will make you respected. Now, let us read the word of God. Genesis 38, verse 27 to 30. Genesis 38, 27 to 30. And it came to pass in the time of her 
travail, that behold, twins were in her womb. Twins. Verse 28. And it came to pass when she travailed, listen to me carefully, when she travailed, that the one put out his hand, took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This come out first. Mm. Verse 29. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out. And the midwife, my, my the midwife said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore, his name was called what? Pharis. His name was called what? Now, about twins. You know, in that time, there was no advancement technology. So, like nowadays, so there was no way a mother would know anything in advance. Now, what was the rule? The rule was, if the babies are twins, the one who comes out first is naturally the elder. Watch this. In our text, one of the twins brought out his hand. They were all in the womb. He put his hand out. And the midwife put a scar and said, This one is the first. Listen to this. He put the hand, but there is no way a baby can proceed out of the womb putting his hand. There is no way a baby can get out of the womb putting the hand. A baby comes out of the womb by the head. Where? Where? That is the baby Zara. Baby what? Baby Zara. The baby Zara. Baby. Baby Zara. Baby Zara. My friend, baby Zara. Baby Zara. You. We, you get out of the womb by the by, by the head, not by the head. The, uh, the. Now, <laughs> because it was impossible to come out of the womb by the hand, by by the hand, he withdrew his hand, and the one Pharis, who was behind, overtook. No, you are not. <laughs> you, you are not getting the world who was me. I see somebody. God is changing your position. Yeah. You are left behind, but there is an anointing of Pharaohs. Abba, Abba, that is moving you from the back to the front. Uh, you are not getting. Amen. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. Receive the Pharaoh's anointing now. Wherever you have been left behind, there was a Zara who was hindering you. Zara, Zara, Zara. Oh. Zara, Zara. Zara withdrew his hand and Pharaoh pushed him back. He came out. Somebody is coming out this season in Jesus' name. I say, somebody is coming out. You are receiving the anointing of Pharaoh. Agnes, sit here. Sit here. When Pharaoh came out, the midwife said, How did you break through? The 
you, the midwife was talking to baby Fares. How did you break through? Now, I want to tell somebody today, the God of Fares will grant you a major breakthrough and people around you will happy with we will ask you how did you make it <laughs> ah glory to god god will open a door for somebody god will grant you a relationship and people will look at it they will wonder be ready what of life wherever you are I don't care what you are going through. There is an anointing of Pharaohs that God is releasing over somebody. You will get a market, a business deal. When people look at the business, they will wonder, how did you get it? Somebody will enter a gate. A gate will be open for somebody. And people will look at you. They will say, how, 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 how? People will be now listen to me <laughs> very soon your identity will become a glorious controversy yeah. I want to tell somebody those who mocked you in the past will announce your celebration every chair the enemy has designed to keep you stagnated is destroyed today in the name of Jesus Christ I want to tell somebody by the anointing of God your miracle will cause your enemies to be surprised because when Pharaoh came out the midwife asked a question how how did you break through Agnes, you will be on TVs all over the world, and people will wonder. They will ask you, Agnes, how did you break through? Now, listen to me, listen to me. What of life? That is so much prophetic. It is very prophetic. People will ask you, how did you get there? Because I see something unusual happening in somebody's life. The way Pharaoh came in front because you were written off. How did you get there? How did you get that business? How get, did you get that man? How did you get that woman? How? Now, if they ask you, tell them the God of Pharaoh. Tell them what? Tell them the God of Pharaoh has made it. Hallelujah. May the God of Pharaohs visit you supernaturally in Jesus' name. May you receive a, a... If you ask me how I am where I am here, I don't know. The God of Pharaohs. The God of Pharaohs. You will go to places because of the God of Pharaohs. You will have divine connection by the God of Pharaohs. You will have great businesses by the God of Pharaohs. Somebody will be around the king by the God of You will have friends who are on the top of the country by the God of Pharaohs. Your business will multiply in the midst of COVID-19. How? By the God of Pharaohs. The God of Pharaohs is the God when he blesses you, people will wonder how. But before you experience the God of Pharaohs, you need to deal with the Zara. <laughs> to deal with who? <laughs> Zara. Let me give you some characteristics of Zara. Number one. Number one. Zara. Zara is an evil spirit. It's an evil spirit. In fact, you should know that Zara is a witchcraft. Zara is Z A R A. Zara uses his hand. To conceal his brother. That was Zara. 
He used his hand to conceal his brother. The Pharaohs wanted to come out. Zara put his hand to stop him from progressing. That is Zara. Many people today, they are not moving at all because the hand of Zara is hindering them. They can't progress. You want to go forward. You want to move ahead. You want to succeed. You want your family to work well. But somehow there is a Zara. Zara can be your husband. <laughs> uh, you, you, are, you, are, you are laughing. Zara can be your husband. You try to pray. Zara is putting his hand. Why are you praying at, at night? I want you. Abba, at night. Time of prayer. Zara is hindering people's progress. Zara wanted to kick out his brother to take his place. That is Zara. Zara uses his hand to manipulate the position of others. Uses his hand. Because Zara wanted to take over others to take their position. But I have a good news for somebody and we pray. I'm closing my message. The good news is this. Agnes here. Today I'm talking to you as a man of God. Any hand of Zara over your life, hindering your progress, hindering your advancement, hindering your success. The hand of Zara, you want to go up, but Zara is still pushing you. You won't. The moment you are happy, the hand of Zara, boom, you start crying. You try, you do five miles to go ahead, Zara, boom, boom. Today, the hand of Zara is leaving your life in Jesus' name. I say the hand of Zara is leaving your life now. Wherever Zara you are, whether a husband, whether a wife, whether a boss, where you are working, the hand of Zara is hindering you from succeeding, from prospering, from going forward. My Bible says, Zara withdrew his hand. And when Zara withdrew his hand, Pharaoh broke through. I see God in the supernatural removing the hand of Zara. I see God removing the hand of Zara. Remove the hand of Zara. Go today as your servant standing from this pulpit. I pray the hand of Zara is leaving your womb, is leaving your business, is leaving your work, is leaving your family. Every Zara, whoever that Zara is, whether in your family, whether in your village, whether a witch who is in her, I proclaim, I declare in the name of Jesus, Zara, withdraw your Zara, withdraw your hand from my business. Go ahead and start praying. Abba, Abba. Declare today, Zara, in the name of Jesus, withdraw your hand over my business. Withdraw your hand from my job. Withdraw your hand from my womb, from my marriage, from my family. Any hand of Zara. Shakara. My friend, go ahead and pray. Wherever you are, start praying. Oh, be angry. Zara, Zara, the hand of Zara. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Start praying. Lord, reposition me. Hallelujah. Reposition me. Reposition me. That is my Sunday of new things. I will break through. At your workplace, who is like Zara putting his hand to pull you down, to pull you down, to die. Oh, hallelujah! Let's stand on our feet, stand on your feet.
feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Declare before the Lord, any Zara, hearing my blessing today. Go ahead, my friend. Start praying. Start praying. Start praying. Declare before the Lord in the name of Jesus. God the Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Rima Shandara. Oh, pray for the hand of the Lord upon your life. Pray for the hand of the Lord upon your life. I will break through this time. 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 Sarah, your hand is removed from my hand. Pray. 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 Declare before the Lord. The time of Sarah is over. The time of Sarah is over upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Pray. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Any witch hindering your progress. Cry to God. 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 Call upon the God of Pharaohs. Call upon the God of Pharaohs and declare, God of Pharaohs, I must break through. God of Position me. God of Pharaohs, move me from the back to the front. My friend, go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Rimaba Sharaba. Rebrek and Oreshada. Oh, hallelujah. God of Pharaohs, intervene in my case. Pray, pray, pray. Pharaohs, Pharaohs is hindering your salary. The hand of Zara is drawing the hand of Zara from your life. Today, not tomorrow. Today, 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 today. Declare before the Lord, I'm coming out. I'm coming out.
please give it with understanding. Because there is a supernatural breakthrough that is happening in somebody's life today. I feel the presence of God in this room where we are is so strong. We feel the anointing in this place. And I believe the same is happening in your home, wherever you are. My friend, you have been hindered for long. God has put gifts in you. You have talent. But there is a Zara somewhere who is pressing you down. Today, after you give your offering and your tithe, I will pray the hand of Zara will draw back today. Your gift will manifest. The ministry God has put in you will manifest. Enough is enough. Zara stops your progress. He's using his hand. Every witchcraft hand will be cut off today. That witch in your village, you cannot go beyond 10,000. You are still hanging around 10,000. 10,000, and then you go down. 1,000, then you go down. You start a business, it starts going up. The hand of Zara comes, boom, the business is down. You start growing in the faith. The hand of Zara comes, boom, you go down. Give your tithe. Give your offering, I will come back, I will pray for you. The power of God will cut off the hand of Zara in your life. And you will go forth head on. You will come out of that womb. You will come out of that evil relationship. You will come out of that evil place where you are being suppressed. I want you to pray. Father, bless the offering and the tithes that people are giving. Agnes, you will sing a song of praise to the Lord, and I will come back, and I will pray for you in Jesus' name. Let us give our tithes and offering. You know the channel. You send to uh, uh, the number you know, and the Lord will bless you. Okay, I
so amazing. I wish we could have a second service. It's so powerful. Hallelujah. We are feeling the presence of God here. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so happy. Now, I want to pray for all of you who have given your tithes, who have given your offerings, those who have watched this message from wherever part of the world you are. Open your hand. We are closing the service. I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus every time who has hindered your blessing who has hindered or is hindering your progress your ministry could have been very far but Sarah is using his hand of witchcraft to suppress your grace to suppress your ministry to suppress the gift you have Today I command Zara, draw back your heart. Wherever you are, Zara, whether in the village, whether in the same house where you are, whether in your neighborhood, whether at your workplace, your hand is withdrawn today. Your hand is cut off today. You will not hinder my brother. You will never hinder my sister. You will not hinder my friend. You will not hinder my people. Wherever they are. I pray today. You receive. The Pharaoh's anointing. Amen. You will break through. Before Zara. Amen. You will overtake Zara. Amen. Say with me, I will overtake Zara. Amen. Say, I will overtake Zara. Say, Zara will never stop me again. Zara will not stop me again. Receive the anointing of Pharaoh to break through. I see prophetically somebody's ministry is breaking through. Somebody's business is breaking through. Somebody's life is breaking through. You are coming in the world. You are batting your destiny. You are batting the grace. You are batting the life you were are, you are born for. Zara, you are a liar. Go back where you come from. Throw back your hand in the name of Jesus. Now your hand of the Lord is upon you, my friend. What a friend, the hand of the Lord is upon us. No Zara will stop our progress. Any Zara who will dare stop our progress, God will cut off his hand. God will withdraw his hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the grace to break through. Receive the grace of me, I receive. Receive the grace of financial breakthroughs. Receive the the grace of emotional breakthrough. Receive the grace of spiritual breakthrough. Receive the grace of breakthrough in your business. Receive the grace of breakthrough in your family. Receive the grace of breakthrough in your womb. Receive breakthrough over your children. God of fathers, show yourself in the world of life today. You are repositioned where you are supposed to be. Where you will live your dream. Where you will live what you have been called for. The happiness that you have ever dreamt is coming to your hand today. Amen. You are living by it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Say with me, I receive. I receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Clap for the Lord. Clap for the Lord. Clap for the Lord. Wherever you are. Clap for Jesus. I see some fairies are coming out. I see some fairies are coming out. You are coming out. Say with me, I'm coming out. Say with me, I'm coming out. Say with me, I'm coming out. I'm coming out like fairies. Oh, you are coming out of poverty. You are coming out of celibacy. You are coming out of stagnation. Fairies, congratulations. Fairies, you are blessed. I enthrone you today as your fathers in your family. The witch in your family will never stop you. You are moving forward. You are breaking through. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say. Amen. Hallelujah. The year 2020, one, two, three. 
On me and his grace shall on me in Jesus' name. Amen. Now tell your neighbor year 2020. Your manifested glory. The Lord shall rise on you. And his glory shall be seen on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the service is over. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? Yes. Did you get something new today? Yes. Did God need to you today? Yes. Are you coming out today? Yes. Zara is still alive around you? No. Hallelujah. No. No. Zara's hand is still on your life? No. Hallelujah. No. You are coming out in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm sweating. <laughs> my friend, my sweat will never be in vain. I'm waiting for your testimony. If ever God does something, please send us a testimony. Because I know today's message is a breakthrough message. I love you all. And you know that. See you on Wednesday for a midweek Bible study. Friday, Peniel. Tomorrow, we go on with the praise challenge. This week, don't pray for you. You have prayed for you since January. This week, pray for somebody else. And this week, praise and give thanks to God. If you are tempted to mama, send me a message. Pastor, the temptation is too strong to mama and to complain. <laughs> I will pray for you. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. In Jesus' name.